<laughs> so actually, Sarah couldn't make it, so I'm covering for her. Um, this talk may not quite be what you expected, um, because everybody has a little bit different take on things. I am currently contracting through Facebook right now, working on HHVM. So I know quite a bit about the guts, but not quite as bit of not quite as much about how to use it. So I may have to punt some questions to Davey, who has just come in. Um, so let's get started. How many of you know anything about HHVM? Have touched it, played with it, ran it? A few people? How many of you know the history of HHVM? Uh, a few people? All right. So they started something in 2008, just one of the Facebook guys playing around, and they called it hip hop. Anybody know what hip hop was? few people? Yes? Okay, so they actually took PHP code, changed it to C++, compiled it, and ran it, which actually made it speed up quite a bit, because what happens when you take code, and instead of running it through the PHP interpreter, you put it right down into a machine language. It runs a hell of a lot faster. The only problem was, it takes a long time to do all that. You gotta take the PHP, you gotta change it to C++, then you gotta compile it. Then you gotta link it, then you gotta deploy it. And let's say you typoed, like I typo all the time when I write PHP code, right? And then you're screwed because you have to do the whole thing again. All right, so they decided in 2010 that maybe this wasn't such a great way to go for the obvious reasons of, yeah, that doesn't work so fast. Um, so they decided to do a, a new virtual machine. And they decided to go the route of a JIT, or a just-in-time compiler. Anybody name another language that has a JIT? .NET. .NET. Anybody else? Yeah? Kind of. <laughs> so this is, this is something that a lot of other languages have done to try and make themselves go faster, right? So this is kind of the stuff that's on the slides. I may not quite take this route, uh, but we will talk about a few things here. So what is HHVM? A lot of people think that HHVM is still what hip hop used to be, which is your source code, uh, change it to C++ and compile it. It's not that anymore, okay? They called that HPHPC. It, it's basically dead. The source code lives on somewhere, but not here. All right, so it's going to run your PHP uh, pages just like the PHP interpreter does. <laughs> this is pretty hilarious. You can use it with fast CGI, or you can use it with fast CGI, or you can use it with fast CGI. You can use it on Linux, or Linux, or Linux, and you can use it with 64-bit, or 64-bit, or 64-bit. <laughs> yeah, your choices are not so large at the moment. Runs anywhere. Runs anywhere, as long as it's... 64-bit x86 Linux. <laughs> it's almost, almost a drop-in replacement for PHP. But it is also young. It is also moving incredibly fast. If you want to scare yourself, go look at the number of commits on GitHub today for HHVM. Go look at how many were done today for HHVM. Okay, so it's not a source code transformer, and, and really it is plug and pray. If you're lucky, everything will run flawlessly, you'll get better performance, it'll be fabulous. If you're unlucky, you'll get to file bugs. <coughs> okay, so HHVM supports mostly PHP syntax and new PHP syntax. So even the stuff in 5.6 is not even quite released, has been put in already. Okay, so the splat stuff isn't quite in. The variadic stuff is splat, the opposite of the variadic stuff. <laughs> oh, you didn't know that was the name for it? How many of you know about 5.6 in the variadic syntax? Yes, and you know that splat is the opposite. So in the variadic syntax, you can put dot, 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 right? Uh, yes, and then the splat goes the other way where you can like gather everything up. And then it has a bunch of additional syntax that was added to it, including, you know, scalar type hinting, async routines, generics, the XHP stuff, user attribute. Uh, there's a whole bunch of really cool stuff in there. Just remember, if you're using the really cool stuff, you're going to have to stick with HHVM. You're going to lose your, your plug and play ability. 
Okay, so HHVM is really easy to install if you're on Ubuntu or something Debian-ish. If you're anywhere else, I'm sorry. <laughs> really, I am. I'm working on it. Uh, actually, they do nightly builds, and we do sta stable builds for the Debian and the Ubuntu platforms that are really easy to get. Uh, it's going to give you one binary for everything. Uh, we're working on other platforms, working on other systems. But if you go look again, go look at the number of commits going into the source repository at any one time. It's moving at such a fast rate. Things are changing all the time. Do you want the stats? Happen? Yeah, what are the stats? Uh, 211 commits this week, 938 files, 27,948. Use the, use the mic. Sorry. Do it again. Uh, 211 commits, 938 files have been modified, 27,948 additions, but 17,000 deletions in one week. One week. When I say HHVM is moving fast, I mean, oh my God, blink. <laughs> okay, so HHVM is buildable. Uh, here's something you probably don't want to hear. Do you know how many dependencies there are for HHVM? At last count, I was trying to compile for a MinGW build for Windows, 45 things. That included all of Boost, which if you've ever built Boost, takes all night. And that's on an i7. Yes, not pleasant. Uh, this is changing. Part of the reason it's like this is right now most of the modules used to be you had to have the PHP extensions like in HHVM, everything. Doesn't matter if you're using Image Magic, you're going to compile it in. Doesn't matter if you're using, you know, anything, it's all going in. Well, that's being changed. The extensions, the way they're done, I'll talk about this later, have been changed. So, a lot of those libraries are actually extension libraries. So, if you're building, you know, the Icon V extension, you of course need the lib Icon V. The stuff that's actually used for core is a much smaller group. I think at last count it was 10 libraries, and that's kind of shrinking as some of the stuff is being moved in and out. Okay, you are going to need uh, a new GCC 4.8. It kind of almost works on Clang if you have bleeding edge Clang. Uh, Visual Studio is coming, but you will have to use the CTP version of it uh, that was released at build last year. Uh, and the reason for that is it uses a lot of C++11 stuff that is required. Um, I'm sorry, Microsoft is being so slow. Um, the biggest thing is they're trying to do all of C++11 and C++14 at the same time because they were way behind. All right, so you can get it all off GitHub. We use CMake for the build system, which is really great. Uh, let's see, anything else I want to tell you about? Oh, this is going to take forever to compile. Actually, it's not going to take that long to compile. It's going to take... I give up at 45%. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's... it's it's the linkage. I mean, think about it. You have 45 libraries. That takes an awful long time and an awful lot of energy to link. And it's a really big binary. It's the, it's the prettiest build system I've ever seen. Like, you get a percentage bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so one of the things that uh, people have problems with or I hear about griping is the fact that... Uh, the way the, the source build is right now, it has a really weird interaction between uh, the internal source at Facebook and the external GitHub. One of the things is this is going to be moving. Right now it's at GitHub slash Facebook. It's going to be going to GitHub slash HHVM. Uh, and the, some of the internal uh, review tools are going to be moved outside just to make this a more open source project. So. This built-in HTTP server that HHVM used to have is going away unless you are really, really good at lib event or lib EV or lib UV and want to fix it. Because otherwise, nobody wants to bother with it. Because we spend more time answering questions on how to set up the server than it's worth. Instead, we're trying to push everybody toward the fast CGI, right? This is a better solution anyway, especially if how many of you are already using Nginx? How many of you are using Apache? How many of you are using fast CGI or PHP FPM? Same thing. A few people? Yeah. Then you're drag and drop, right? Things are already set up on the server side. You're just going to use a different binary for doing the PHP work. So fast CGI is the way to go, especially if you're playing with a new install. 
So here's a couple ways to show you how to set it up. Notice here we're using Unix sockets to run it through. This is going to give you a lot better speed than if you try and use TCP sockets. That's something with FastCGI. And of Sorry, course, can I, there's. Can I chime in on that? What? So you, you can do it over TCP, like you do with uh, FPM. You can like turn it to port 9000, uh, or you can do it over sockets. With sockets, you may hit U limits. Um, with the TCP stuff, you're less likely to. Yes. Uh, but just be aware of that. Like you may need to bump your U limit uh, for the socket stuff. All right. So the number one people want to hear about HHVM is why. What? Everybody says it's fast. Fast, fast, faster, better, stronger. I'm going to trip on that. I just did. <coughs> So what makes it fast? All right, so there are two modes for HHVM. The first one is our bytecode interpreter. This acts exactly the same way PHP does. All right, we're going to take it, we're going to compile it to bytecode, and we're going to run the bytecode. Now, the bytecodes are formatted differently. It's not like you can take bytecode that the Zend engine did and try and run it on HHVM or anything. But it's the same concept. We're going to parse a file. We're going to put it into bytecode, and then we're going to run it. The performance for this is about on par with PHP, with APC. All right? You're not going to get a whole burst of speed just by running it. So if you're running on Mac, because everybody deploys on a Mac, right? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. oh, yeah, everybody does. Uh, the Mac builds do not have the JIT stuff that I'll talk about in a moment running yet. So you're only going to get on par PHP performance. So if you're one of those guys who is bound to determine to prove that, that HHVM or PHP is faster and you're benchmarking on a Mac, I will laugh my head off. Okay? You're not going to see any other performance improvements. It's basically the same thing. So this is the difference, and this is the JIT. JIT is the just-in-time compilation. So what this does is it's going to run your code a couple of times, just regularly, running it cold. And then it's going to say, hmm, this is something I'm hitting over and over and over and over again. Maybe this is something I need to optimize. I need to make run really fast. So I'm going to check it and see, is it hot? Oh, yes, it is. So I'm going to take the time, and I'm going to write this into assembly code, into machine code that your processor understands. This would be like sitting down and compiling a, a C binary to machine code. It's going to run faster when you hit that. And that, of course, makes things run lots and lots faster. Well, at least for the things that it detects properly. Then we have something called a repo authoritative mode. This is also what you do for production mode, right? So this actually takes the code that you know you're going to put into production. It's going to compile it down. And it's going to like do better analysis on it to really find the parts that can really, really be optimized. And it's going to write them out for you, right? It assumes no changes are made. <laughs> so if you make changes, this isn't going to work very well for you. All right, so this really speeds things up. And there are lots and lots of you know, benchmarks and statistics are damn lies all over the place. And depending on how you set things up, anything can look faster, especially if you muck with graphs. However, here are a few graphs that you can look at and you can run for yourself and make your own decisions on things. So this is Magento. Daniel Sleuth set up all these uh, benchmarks for it. If you go to the URL, these will be up later. Uh, you can actually go and download these and look at them for yourself, OK? So this is the response time in milliseconds for using a LAMP stack or using HHVM. Yeah, that's a big difference. Now, notice something about Magento. This is a pretty large code base, and it's a pretty complex code base. Two things I'm going to be talking about a lot. Large, complex code bases show great results. All right, and here's the transaction rate. You can see you get a lot, 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 lot more transactions with HHVM. So we did this as well with Symphony. Christian Stalker did it. Again, you can go take a look for yourself. PHP 5.3, PHP 5.5, and HHVM. 
I do want you to take a look for a minute at the difference between 5.3 and 5.5. This is why you upgrade PHP. Even if you don't go to HHVM, for goodness sake, upgrade PHP. And we have more. This is the total page load time. Now notice the spike. This is what usually happens when you start flooding your... How many of you follow internals on PHP? Anybody here? A few of you. How many of you look at the wiki and look at the RFCs to see what people are talking about in PHP and what's coming next? So I'm going to mention something that's going on right now. I heard PHP is getting a JIT, kind of. It's called PHP NG. This is something that the Zen people were working on. It translates Zen bytecode. He's working on this. You didn't know this? Yeah. Yes, yes. It's a lot faster, but it's not quite as fast as where we have, right? All right, so I'm going to kind of go off the rails here a little bit. Uh, the number one thing I get asked all the time when I uh, talk to people about what I'm doing right now is the question of, well, why is Facebook bothering to open source PHP? I'm, I mean, HHVM. Why would they bother doing that? Uh, there's lots of reasons, right? More what? More eyes. More eyes on the code. Anybody else have any ideas for why they might why want to do it? Free labor. Free labor? Yes, possibly. Yes, yes. Anything else? Yeah? There's so much weird stuff that happens in PHP functions that you pretty much need a team of a million people to fix it. <laughs> that too. <laughs> to get stuff back into PHP. Ah, there's one. To get stuff back into PHP. How do you have control over something or even influence something that's a totally open source language? You don't. You don't. You threaten to fork it. You threaten to fork it. Hey, that worked really, really well for GCC and the ECS folks, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Anybody, does fun. anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody know that story? So this is the, the poster child story for fork. There was GCC and it was going along, but it was moving pretty slowly. GCC is the compiler most Linux distributions use. And there was a group of folks who wanted to move faster, put new stuff in, make stuff work better. And the GCC folks were like, no. So they said, fine, we're going to fork. We're going to call ourselves ECS. They went off, did their fork, added a bunch of new stuff. And everybody who was using GCC said, huh, you suck. You're really good. So everybody moved over to ECS to the point where the GCC guys were like, um, OK come back, we'll just use your source. And that's what happened. They merged back together, and what was once ECS became GCC. Not really. So this is what happens. Zend, in general, uh, so Rasmus wrote his little toy. Rasmus played with his little toy and it became PHP 3. And then in PHP 4, a couple of college kids came and said, we have this engine that makes it run better, and that became PHP 4. So all languages change. So getting back to my original discussion, which was, oh, political reasons for opening sourcing something. Uh, another thing that's really useful about open source is getting feedback on some of the ways you are doing things, right? How can you really know if you're really going in the right direction if you don't get a wider spectrum of opinions and places from all over the world? All right. The other thing is there's a lot of people who are like, well, is HHVM going to become PHP 6 or PHP 7 or just replace it? How many of you use other languages such as Python or Ruby? Quite a few, good. What implementation of those languages do you use? The default. <coughs> yes, there is a default, but there are other implementations of all those languages, right? PyPy, PyPy CPython, C Ruby, Ruby, Rubinius, right? And they each have their strengths and weaknesses, depending on what you're doing. Because in software, the best tool for the job, you hear that a lot? The one that works. Yeah, the one that works. Also, the one that goes the fastest is it depends. Yeah. 
I ha people hate it when I tell them that. Well, is this going to make my site faster? It depends. So, I am really pleased that there is HHVM for the simple reason that it creates some competition. Yes, good competition. What happens in a monopoly? Stagnation. Yeah, what happened when IE was the only browser that was non sucky? Yeah, IE6, and we all know how that turned out. And then we had Firefox, and suddenly there was competition, and now we have Chrome, and suddenly we have HTML5, and we no longer have to worry about Flash, finally, because we can kill it with fire. There's one thing you can change against the here as well, though. Yes? HHVM, some, some of the decisions go against some of the original ideas of PHP, right? Right. Like which ones? Static type ending, yes. That is something. So some of the things that have gone into HHVM have been proposed to PHP, but have been voted down in, IRC, in RFCs and not decided to be part of the language. On the other hand, there is stuff that HHVM has done that has gone into PHP. One of those is generators. How many of you use generators? A few of you? Do you even know what generators are? They're like iterators for lazy. <laughs> they are. They're iterators for the lazy. And they're really functional. But that is something that started in HHVM, and then the idea made its way into PHP. And there's some other things as well. So you can get cross-pollination, but you're also kind of almost coming up with a different language. How do other languages, does anybody here know, how do other languages make sure that alternate implementations are really the same language? SPAC. SPAC. Language SPAC. Does PHP have a language SPAC? No, good. We wish. The source code. Yeah, the source code. <laughs> Bugs, tests, and all. And when people ask, what's the SPAC for PHP, people say, well, the implementation. The problem with that is that sometimes the implementation has bugs. Sometimes those bugs get fixed, sometimes they do not. But the problem is, is the bug really part of the implementation or are we just leaving it? If we have a spec, we can say, yes, this is a bug, we are going to fix it, it is going to break, too bad. So a couple people have actually proposed doing a spec for the PHP language on the list. Um, and the major feedback is, okay, go ahead, write one. And the reason for that is, this is going to not be a small job. Good luck. Is this like the Siberian job where they just ship you off in the middle of nowhere? <laughs> the Siberian job. Possibly, but I also think it could be a really good thing for a group of people to sit down and do. What happens if we have a language spec for PHP? It means, like you said, it can foster competition. <laughs> now everyone has a baseline of this is where we start. Yes, it can, it can do some great competition, but the other thing is it can give us an excuse to fix bugs that break backwards compatibility. And that's a big one, at least for me. I am, I'm kind of irritated when I'm like, this is a bug, but we're going to keep it because it's for backwards compatibility purposes. But it's a bug. <laughs> so it does give an opportunity to have a cleaner implementation of the language as well, right? Something to think about. If you're interested in getting involved, there are a few people on the mailing list who have been talking about it. I'm not sure how far that effort has gone. But at the end of the day, it's going to take people with uh, passion and with time to sit down and do that. And people who are willing to put up with lots of bullshit. Because you are going to get that when you try and make decisions for an open source project, right? However, it's something I would really like to see happen. So how many of you have heard of hack? Yes, hack? How many of you tried to Google hack? <laughs> yeah, like absolute worst name for a language ever. Except for Go. Well, I don't know. <laughs> yes. Uh, That's why we use Hacklang, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you want to find anything about hack, you better search for Hacklang. Uh, because just looking for hack will get you things you probably don't want to see. Well, hack is a Japanese multimedia franchise. <laughs> So what is the reason that hack was invented? 
If you want to know what hack is, it's a bunch of additional features to the language, things like strict typing and checking and all sorts of tools. And the reason it was implemented is to make developers' lives better, especially on very large code bases. The larger the code base, the more difficult it is to keep a clean, bug-free environment, right? More complication, more problems. <coughs> so hack support's built into HHVM as a version 3. I'm going to say if you're using HHVM, you better be running nightly. <laughs> It changes so fast and so many things get fixed that if you're not keeping up to date, you're going to find yourself in the dust. So to turn on hack mode, you use an opening tag with HH instead of PHP. Bracket, dollar sign, I mean bracket, question mark, HH. It has a bunch of really cool type hinting stuff, like to the point where it's crazy. It has static analysis tools that'll help you find all the really bad things in your code. It also has some really cool tools for dealing with uh, specialization of arrays and things like that. These are the generic things. The constructor arg promotion is also really cool. I use this all the time. Now when you run hack, there are a couple modes you can run it in. And each different mode is going to treat errors differently. Uh, usually I tell people, let's go with the non-strict stuff first, uh, unless you really like pain. Because a lot of like really large code bases, you turn on the really strict typing stuff and it'll bad, 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 bad everywhere. <laughs> so let's look a little bit at what some of the hack syntax looks like. All right. C can I talk a little bit on the type? Sure. So um, the big thing with strict is that you actually cannot call into other non-strict code. So you can't just go, this one file is going to be strict. Uh, decal, I think, is decal. the partial. So this file must be strict, but it can call into non-strict code. And that's the one that I prefer. Mm -hmm. uh, partial is the default, which is it's kind of uh, optional. So. Yes. If you run it in partial mode, it just says, well, I think you probably ought to fix this. If you run it in decal mode, you can say, this file is, is be good with this file, and this one I don't care about. And if you run in strict, you're probably screwed. Especially if you use like uh, other people's libraries and stuff. And you can't, you can't run top level code in strict. No. Everything has to be enclosed. So like your bootstrap, your index.php can never be strict because you can't call into anything. <laughs> so. Yes. And the interesting thing is you turn on those modes with comments, which is very strange. I wasn't going to talk opinion. about that. <laughs> I wasn't going to talk. Yeah, so the way you change in a file what kind of uh, hack syntax checking it's doing is actually by putting a comment right underneath your HH. After? <laughs> After? Yeah. It works on a new line, too. Oh, I didn't know that. I'm learning. I'm learning. All right. So basically, all this does is it, it shows you some strict typing things. We're going to say it absolutely has to be an int, and it's going to yell at you it has to be an int or it has to be a string. This is my favorite. This is constructor arg promotion. Me too. <laughs> you too. This is something I'd actually like to see in PHP itself. Uh, basically, this is just kind of a way to do private. Uh, you can set it automatically in the constructor. Yeah, you don't need to define the property like on its own at the top of the class. You define it within the arguments for the uh, constructor. And where normally you, uh, inside the constructor, you take each argument and assign it to the property, it just happens automatically. Yes. Um, so it's just huge amounts of boiler code, boilerplate code yep. going away. For people who don't like to type, this is nice. This is one of my favorites, too. This is generics. Uh, how many of you have ever written any C++? Any C sharp. They have the same kind of thing here where you can take a, a generic container and tell it I can only have this type inside it. Right? So you could do this the hard way or you can do it the easy way. This is just a lot less typing in the end. I mean you can do all this in PHP just by coding it by hand. Just just this just takes the hard part out of it. Now there's been some talk about doing a a PHP to hack conversion. So you could write your code in hack and if you were still running it on the PHP uh, interpreter, 
you would run your code and it would output regular PHP code that would do the extra work to make some of this stuff work. Uh, I think somebody was playing with it, but it's not complete yet as far as I know. Are generics, are they erased at runtime? Yeah, so when you instantiate, so basically the, the T that you see there is kind of a placeholder for the type. So when you instantiate that, that's when you specify the type. And then from that point on, that instance of the object can only handle that type. But is that, is that, is that work to compile time or runtime? Actually? I, th I think that um, a compile time is where it will uh, specify that it needs to be that type, but at runtime it's going to check as you go through. So the actual Both? I think is the answer to yeah. your question. <laughs> Next we have collections. Collections are pretty nice if you've worked in languages with something other than the hash table of doom. <laughs> That's okay at everything in bad and specific cases. So PHP has basically one type for holding collections of data, right? We have our array, which is not actually an array underneath the covers. It's a hash table. And it works really great for most common use cases of people who use PHP. But there are a lot of times you want something a lot more specific. So you can have things like frozen and mutable, vector set. This should all be bringing back college memories for those of you who are computer science majors. These usually have very specific use cases, but kind of like go-to. Uh, it's not something you want to use all the time, but when you really need it, you really need it. And it's almost impossible to just try and fake it. This is one of my favorite things that I've actually not found a use case for yet. I've just played with it. And that is the async functionality. Okay, how many of you have needed to do parallel tasks in your web pages? How many of you have ever used ignore user abort and kept doing something after the end of the page? Yeah, this kind of helps with that kind of <laughs> bad code. <laughs> so this syntax right now is still kind of ugly and the implementation is not quite yet finally complete because we're still getting feedback on it. Um, but this is the basic idea, right? You're going to go get a page and you're going to wait till it comes back and then do something with it. So, while one is blocking, the other is executing, so you're not sitting there waiting for 10 different pages to download. It's easier than sockets. Yeah, it is easier than sockets. Yes, definitely. As we do more and more sort of client side, like Angular stuff, I think we're going to see more and more of this stuff. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm looking at React PHP for the same purpose, but this looks pretty yes, awesome. Yes, yes. This is the same kind of thing as what React PHP does. Then we have user attributes, right? Uh, user defined metadata. Kind of reminds me a lot of annotations, yes? Of course, if people are actually using reflection in, in production code, I'm usually an unhappy camper. It's uh, faster in HHVM, but in PHP, well, it's better in 5.4 than it ever was before, but it's still not something you want to be doing all the time on all your pages. It's slow and a memory hog. Anyway. This just gives you a bunch of additional information you can get out of it. What this is really useful for is things like documentation. How many of you have heard of X? A few people? This was actually released as an extension for PHP at one point. What this does is it allows you to basically use interesting syntax, as I call it, <laughs> to put data directly in. All right, so this is what you do normally. Well, maybe. So instead you do this markup. Notice here, what are we missing? Quotes. Quotes, anybody see that? Quotes. So instead of having to put quotes around it, it says, oh, this is XHP markup. I'm going to treat it specially. All right, the parser can see what's user data. What stuff I'm getting from PHP that I'm throwing in there? So it forces that to be escaped. Um, what's really important to understand is that you must, you can't have loose tags. It must be completely well nested. Yes. Um, that's what this formalizes component modularity stuff is about. Is you like you have to have complete 
blocks of, of HTML uh, or XHTML as it is. Yes. Okay, so you can compose it from other tags, so you can do things that are a little more complex. You can do custom components, see we're setting up uh, elements and attributes and things, so you can basically change the XHTML to do really complicated output. Now, I find this really hard to read, but what you can do here is like extend an HTML element. So you can take something that's already defined and say, I want to add these things to it without having to do a brand new one completely from scratch, which that actually uh, does blink tags, which is horrible. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the debugger. Uh, actually, this has a pretty nice debugger built already into it. How many of you have used dbg? Anybody here? Few people? The commands for the, the HHVM debugger here are very similar to that. Uh, you can use it standalone, you can use it with a server, there's breakpoints. All the things you're used to if you're used to a command line debugger are here for you to use. All right. So, anybody looked at a PHP extension lately? Yes, no, maybe a few people. How many people have ever tried to write and or edit a PHP extension? How many of you ever have, have you done that and gone, where the hell or what the hell is that macro? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So this is really, really tiny. This is what a PHP extension looks like. It's Yes, it is a very nasty one. <laughs> I did not. Yes. This is what it looks like in HHBM. Oh, wait, what does that look like? It's PHP. Not hack. <laughs> not hack. Okay. So let's say we need to call into C. But we can do it this way. Then we have a, a PHP file for the extension that calls into that native function that you've already defined in the other file. So you can write the majority of your code in PHP and write only small parts in C++ that actually talk to a, a native library, right? Uh, this is very similar to the way uh, the JNI works. It's also very similar to the way a lot of uh, Python is very well known for doing this. You tend to have a small C component for a Python library and then many Python files that make the APIs not C APIs because C APIs are the curl extension and nobody ever wants to touch them. This, uh, this actually speaks to the performance of, of HHVM. Uh, Sarah once told me that they did write C++ extensions and then they rewrote them in PHP and they were faster once they were compiled on the JIT than the custom written C++. Yes, and that has to do with uh, the optimization choices that the JIT makes uh, because it looks at that and says, oh, I'm going to put the native right here and jump out to it. All right, what questions do we have? I hope there's a lot. <laughs> yes. Oh. Okay. Development headers. Like an HHVF dash dev package for compiling. Yeah. <laughs> Have you bugged Paul lately? No. <laughs> that, that's his responsibility now. Yeah. Um, so the build packages, right now, the problem with that is that the build scripts are not set up to automatically package that. And uh, the other problem is, until just recently, the whole, it used to be in HHVM that the extensions were not that nice to do, right? Originally, they had something called an IDL file, and it had to be parsed and changed and compiled, and everything had to be statically compiled, and it was really kind of horrible. And then Sarah said, no, this is stupid. So 
they did a new extension system. The problem is half of the extensions are still in the old system, <coughs> half are in the new. And one of the problems is as we're porting the old extensions to the new, we're finding new things that need to be added into the extension system. So everything's in a constant flux, right? Um, still, it sounds like somebody needs to be kicked if we don't have a dev package for poor people who are trying to write extensions. Uh, you have a bug file? You don't have a bug. What are you asking me for? Go file a bug. <laughs> uh, do I have other questions? Yes? In the um, example that you had for uh, return value type ending. Yes. Um, you had class foo with an add method that was returning a foo. Yes. Find that type hint to be a member of, uh, to be the actual class that you have rather than the class as defined, so that if you inherit foo. Oh, I see. Yes. Yes. There is a this type hint, which basically is the runtime this. Yes. Do I have other questions? Well, I'll tell you the question. Well, yes, go ahead. With the generics, can you type. Um, Subclasses, and can you do watercolors? Yes, and there's a specific way, but I forget how. Uh, if you look on, what? Oh, sorry. He was asking if uh, generics can do uh, subclasses or wildcards, and yes, and yes. There's a specific syntax. If you go to hhvm.org and look in the docs there, they have examples of how to do that. Hacklang.org. Oh, is that a hack stuff? Yes. Well, actually, the link to HackLang is on HHBM now. It is. It yes. Is. But you'll, you'll, you'll kind of drop straight into the manual if you go to hacklang.org. Yep. So. Do I have any other questions? Well, this, yeah? When do you think uh, it'll be more stable? Oh, the big dirty question. When do I think it'll be stable? Um, yeah. That's when a hard PHP question to answer. Stable. What? When PHP is stable. <laughs> when PHP is stable? <laughs> Oh, you're so funny. No, so I, I think that like because it runs as a, a fast CGI process, stability is not like if the one interpreter crashes, it's not going to bring down your whole server. So like that limits the stability issues. It's more about the stability of the language, like of hack uh, and the pace that they're going. Uh, I don't see them slowing down anytime really soon. Um, but okay, so one of the one of the big things that HHVM has been working on this year and that they're still working on is language parity. So what is language parity? It means if I drop this into place, it's going to run as PHP. Only there's a couple problems with that. One is, what is one of the very big strengths of PHP? Anybody know? It's cross-platform. <coughs> HHVM is very much not. Now that's in progress. I'm working on a Windows port and we have people working. The OS X builds now. The JIT is not quite done because Apple is annoying. Um, <laughs> uh, but it's in progress. But you can't really say that we are ready to call it stable if we're going to have to rewrite portions of the language to accommodate different operating systems, right? Uh, so that's there. And then there's the problem of, all right, now it doesn't crash and we've reached parity, but PHP is still moving as well. Um, I can't like give a time for when this will be done or when it will be stable, but I will say that it has stabilized a lot, even moving fast, over the past three or four months. So is it something you can drop the <coughs> typical system that does like correct operations and how can fancy uh, yeah, for the most part, most of your really basic stuff. If you do a lot with some of the more edge features in PHP, how many people here do a lot with streams? Anybody here? Sockets? Yeah, you probably don't want to. Uh, if you are doing stuff that's on the CLI, uh, running CLI scripts, no. Um, I disagree with that. No, no, it's performance considerations, you right? You actually have to turn off the JIT. Yeah. Yeah, it's just no point having the JIT on. For, for long running processes, uh, it's fine to leave the JIT on, but don't do daemons in this stuff anyway, so. No. Uh, and the other thing I hear, a lot, so I can't give you like a time limit. Yes, it's going to be stable here, but it's getting there and it's getting better. Um, the other thing is people always ask me, is this going to make my server awesomely fast? Right? Isn't that what everybody wants? 
this makes Facebook awesomely fast? Is this going to make my server awesomely fast? Well, first of all, I want you to profile your application. And the reason I want you to do this is I want you to answer one question. Is PHP what is slow? When you are taking a site and making it better, making it have better performance, the first thing you need to see is what's actually slow. It doesn't matter how fast PHP runs or how fast HHVM runs. If you're talking to a MySQL server somewhere so far away that the latency is giving you like mega, mega multiseconds to get your data back, it doesn't matter what you do on the PHP or HHVM end. It's still going to be slow. You're still waiting for that socket connection. You're still waiting for the database to give you your data back. Profile first. If PHP is your slowdown, which generally doesn't tend to be the case in slower CRUD applications, but does tend to be the case in very large and very complex systems, yes, this is going to give you better performance. But again, you're going to have to drop it in and try it and profile it. And if it breaks, file bugs. <laughs> is, is there a profiler for HHVM? Yes. It's XHProf, right? Yes. It's kind of built in? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes? Okay, so why are most of the frameworks breaking? Uh, two reasons. Number one is parts of the core in PHP that are not quite completely the same. And the big one for that is streams. The streams and filters stuff in PHP uh, is pretty cool. The stuff in, in HHVM is broken. I mean, it kind of almost works for most things, but like filters don't even barely exist. Uh, the, the SSL filter stuff is completely non-existent. Uh, so that's a big problem. Uh, the other place you're going to see it is in extensions, right? You know what the number one question in the HHVM right now is? When is MongoDB going to be stable? <laughs> yes, it is. But that is the big thing. If you are using extensions that are not part of core PHP or extensions that have not been done and stabilized, you're going to have issues. Um, so it's extension problems, it's streams problems, and most of the other things tend to be really small bugs with things like, oh, maybe an error is worded differently, or maybe it's just a clowny test. You guys all know what clowny tests are? Yes, you do a test, and, and it's not really testing what it's supposed to test. And so it fails, and you're like, wait a minute, what the heck? My other really favorite one is uh, there are tests in PHP that are failing right now. Go look at Travis at the PHP GitHub repo. And so, of course, they're going to fail in, in HHVM, too. They, they all fail. So you kind of have to be aware of that, too. Sometimes these frameworks don't have 100% passing to begin with. So mm -hmm. you have clowny tests, you have stream stuff that isn't quite done, and you have extensions that are not complete. Yeah? Well, there's something that, uh, I'll finish that question. OK. And, and the last thing, of course, is just edge cases. PHP is edge case hell, right? This is something where a spec would really help. And surprisingly, a lot of these large frameworks are complex enough, they have made use of, or accidentally made use of, an edge case. And you hit the edge case and things are messed up. The, so the like, mantra. for example, what? The mantra is bug for bug. Yes. So for example, uh, for the extensions thing, for a long time, uh, everything in ZF2 was failing. And they were like, why is this all failing? Well, the Intel extension was missing like, one parameter in one function. And it was making everything fail for ZF2. So sometimes it's really, really small things that make the framework passing rate look bad, when it's actually not that big of a bug. So if you're using MySQL or, or PGSQL or PDO as your database stuff, right? That's what you're using. Uh, it's actually pretty, those, those things have pretty good support right now. If you're using MongoDB or you're using something like Redis or something way out there, you're probably not going to have as good a results just because those extensions are not stable. Yeah? Uh, I don't know if this was like older, like last year, and it's rumor mill that people keep bringing up that they're, it's been mentioned, they compatibility layer so that you can use the 
pickle, sorry, pickle extensions. Ah, yes, then compact. So, yes, there is, Paul did the work for this. Okay, so they were asking about a compatibility layer for pickle extensions that already exist. And there is one. It's called Zen Compat. It does not compile on anything but Linux right now um, because there are assumptions being made in it that need to be fixed. Uh, the bottom line is this. It takes as much of the PHP APIs as it can and points to where the, that information is in HHVM. So theoretically, you can simply compile a pickle extension against this run it against this because it'll find all the, the functions that it needs to and just run. For the most part, this works except on extensions that touch engine parts or extensions that do really bad things. Surprisingly, the number of extensions that touch engine parts and do really bad things in PHP is really high. <laughs> Shock. <laughs> Shock. So yes, you can try that. There are some extensions that have really good uh, success with that. MongoDB is not one, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, like when you have the, what's the annot decoration called? It's an annotation. Yes. Where you do native method. Yes. The PHP source there does have to be type tag code, right? Or is that optional? With the like return types and the annotated types. Oh yes, that must be hack code. Be hack, hack decal. Yes. So for the Zen Compat stuff, how are the inferences made for? Because obviously, like PHP underscore method needs to be a typed method for HHVM. Mm. Like the PHP source would have HHVM method and it would have an actual typed PHP method with the return type annotated? They may just assume they're all mixed. Okay. So yeah, them. I think that's what they do. If I remember right, he's using variant everywhere, so yes. Okay. Yes? So does hack have name parameters? <laughs> does hack have name parameters? Actually, no, because name parameters are really, really hard to get everybody to agree on a syntax for, and they're really, really hard to implement in a way that makes them performant, right? Most languages that have them have kind of like, well, yeah, performance isn't quite as important, but we'll Ruby take the Ruby has them. Yeah. Didn't I just say way. performance isn't quite as important? Thank you. <laughs> Do I have any other questions? Yes, no, maybe? Everybody's like, no, How's no. Curl How is curl support? Curl support is actually really nice. Uh, one of the things HHVM does, which I approve of, is it said it's really stupid to write our own uh, HTTP streams layer, and it's really stupid to do all this other stuff. Let's just take the curl libraries and use them for our PHP, uh, our underlying library to talk to HTTP, right? So HTTP streams and everything else use that library, but the extension itself is actually an old IDL extension, but it's very stable, and they're working on porting it. I don't know if that's done yet. There, there was no clue. I don't use curl. You don't use curl. <laughs> I use streams, so now I'm using curl. Great. That <laughs> cat. Yes. If you were profiling your code, uh, what specific sorts of things would, be would you be looking for? And this is probably a silly question. Uh, <laughs> I'll only ask it once. <laughs> um, what specific sorts of things would you be looking for to like, see if, like an estimate of whether HHVM would be a win for your code base versus something that HHVM wouldn't really help with? Anything not I.O. Yeah. I mean, so you're anytime. gonna look for things that are F, uh, include f open anything that touches the file system, right? Or MySQL query, PDO query, yes. anything like that. Sockets. Anything that's talking to an outside data source, anything that's talking to the operating system, those are things that it, it's not gonna be any different on HHVM. You're talking to the system. You have the system limitations there. Uh, anything that's like oh, I've got this loop that's processing all this data and doing evil things to it, oh, that would be a great place. You'll probably get a pretty big performance benefit from that, right? If you, if you can derive the big O notation, that's probably a nice indicator, but I don't know how to do that. <laughs> yeah. There was a huge, huge benefit from 5.2 to 5.4. So like Maybe. Any other questions? I have a question. Yes? With the JIT, it doesn't, it's not like APC. Like APC caches the entire file uh, and runs it. With the JIT, it's literally picking out like specific segments of the larger file, right? So yes. it'll find a for loop 
and it'll optimize that and it'll yes. jump between the interpreted and the yes. JIT stuff. So. The JIT basically does like a Murkoff chain on the, on the chain call chain or call stack to figure out where it's going. And when it sees a pattern of something happening over and over again, it goes, oh, well, I'm just going to take that and optimize it. Cool. Did everybody hear that? Yes? No? Uh, <laughs> can I repeat it? No. Give him the. Say it again. Say it again, Sam. So basically, a JIT, what it's doing is taking a Markov analysis of the call stack, and when it sees that a series of uh, nodes or edges get repeated over and over again, it grabs that, sets it aside, and compiles it down to machine code. And so then when every time you reference that one section, it just jumps out to machine code and comes back to the interpretation of the rest of the code. Everybody here at that time? Yes? Good. So basically it says, oh look, I'm doing this again and again. <laughs> Maybe I should stop doing the same thing over and over again because isn't that the definition of insanity? <laughs> and it takes that and it puts it over in a section. It actually puts it in memory and it says, here, save this. Just as if I compiled it down and it's not part of the program. And then every time it hits that same point in the code, it goes, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do this instead because I don't want to be an insane program. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, no, possibly, maybe. All right, I have a whole bunch of resources here for you at the end. Uh, thank you for putting up with me. This was kind of a last minute thing for me to cover this talk. So I'm never quite as good at Sarah at it because she lives and breathes HHVM. Um, I am always very willing to have people help people out who want to get involved in the HHVM development. Uh, we're going to do a hackathon later. I'll be doing PHP internal stuff and PHP t testing and HHVM. So if you're interested in any of that, yes, I'm pimping it. Come, I like to make minions. Do you provide the goggles? <laughs> yes, and the yellow paint. Did you make these from scratch or are these? These are Sarah's okay. slides. Yes. There, there's one other resource. Um, I've been writing a series of blog posts. Yes, it's very good. Blog.engineer.com. Uh, <laughs> if you go to the PHP category, uh, I've got number three. I've got number four on the way. Number five's in my head. Uh, <laughs> and someone else mentioned something else, and maybe number six. Um, Do you still advocate running your test suite through HHVM? Yes and no. I think it's a great way to determine compatibility with HHVM. Uh, it's a great way to run them faster, kind of as an aside. So maybe as you're developing, use HHVM and then do a sanity check in PHP if you're going to deploy it to PHP, of course. Uh, I do still advocate Composer, um, but yeah. Oh, before I forget, who, you, who, who here uses Travis? You want a really quick way to do a sanity check on your code to see if HHVM is going to blow up? Travis now supports HHVM. Go to your Travis file, turn it on, and see what blows up. Hey! It pulls in the nightly, right? Yes, it yeah. pulls in the nightly, so you'll see instantly. Yes, this is good. Yes, yes. It won't the whole build, but you can see how it works. Yes, so that's a, a really quick, easy, dirty way. You don't have to install anything. Just change your Travis file and see what's going on. Great way to play with it. Anything else? Oh, the other thing is, uh, uh, how many of you heard of uh, the eval.org? A few people? It's a website that you can go to. I'll put the link up on Twitter later. And you can run code against multiple versions of PHP and see the output for it. They're adding HHVM to that. It's 3v4l. It's, it's eval. It's leak code yes. for eval. It's, it's leak code for eval. So 3v4l.org. It's really nice even in general for testing PHP code quick and dirty on multiple versions, but you can also do it with HHVM code now. So. Really PHP is too hard. Yes. Why didn't I know about that? <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. Get on IRC. Oh, yeah. Yeah, all, all the devs are on IRC. It's a great place to talk to them. <laughs>